Hey everybody, um, so <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to give my own uh, hot take on the uh, D&D OGL 1.1. Um, if you haven't heard about this, you know, it's like either you just don't care about D&D or um, like everybody is, is talking about this right now, like how bad it is. Um, everybody from like, I watched a video like Moist Critical, like Kevin did a video yesterday talking about it. And he said that he's played one D&D game in his entire life. Like Asmongold did a video about it. Like every YouTube channel out there that does D&D content is talking about how bad this um, uh, OGL 1.1 is, right? Um, so there's like some serious issues with the uh, the OGL. What it what it originally was that way back in like 2000 or whatever it was, um, uh, Wizards um, Wizards of the Coast, uh, the people who make D and D, did a uh, standard rule set. Um, uh, I think it's. Uh, they call it like the SRD standard rules document or um, the uh, the OGL open gaming license um, and what that means is that basically anybody could um, uh, here we go um, anybody could uh, publish um, their own material basically inside the D&D universe like using the rule set and um, a do it a royalty and copyright free. So they, they could publish things like adventures and, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, for the D&D setting without Wizards or Hasbro coming after them, right? For like a cut of the profits or copyright infringement. And um, so, you know, that's, that's one thing, right? And, and this is part of the new OGL, is that um, they feel like it's not being used as it was intended because um, it, it's spawned multiple direct competitors, like most notably Pathfinder. Um, Pathfinder, Paizo used to, they were a, um, a publisher that published content for D&D, like they published adventures and stuff like that um, for D and D, like um, uh, Cobalt Press. Cobalt Press is another really good example where um, you don't have to buy their rule book. Um, they're they're publishing supplements for D and D, things that add to the D and D universe, right? That are compatible with their rule set, but they're publishing them under their umbrella, their their publisher. And not giving D and D a cut of Earth Wizards or Hasbro a cut of the profits and et cetera, et cetera, right? So um, we have a new, is there a new CEO? I'm not sure. Like the, you might hear me say allegedly a lot here. Wizards doesn't know who I am. You know they they have no idea that I exist. But I don't want to get sued. Um, so uh, allegedly. Wizards has a new CEO, I think, um, or or Hasbro, one of the two. And this person is an ex um, Xbox employee who's like really fond of like microtransactions and you know shitty stuff like that. And um, they're just kind of like sleazy, like what they're doing. Like for instance, um, Wizards also owns Magic the Gathering, right? And um, they had a, a big um, anniversary for uh, Magic the Gathering. And um, uh, Magic the Gathering put out a box set, like an anniversary box set of like rare and like coveted cards that you can't actually use in the game. Um, but they charged $1,000 for it, $999 for it. And they're on the record saying that that was like the right move that was a good call uh to do that to their fans you know the fans of of magic um like they thought that that was appropriate and then this you know this person the ceo also also said oh you know um 
like at a shareholders meeting. Dungeons and Dragons is one of the most um, like recognizable IPs out there. Like everybody has heard of Dungeons and Dragons. It doesn't matter if you think that people who play D and D are gigantic nerds or you know whatever. It's like it's one of the most recognizable IPs out there, and D and D is hands down the eight hundred pound gorilla, like biggest kid on the block as far as it go, as far as RPGs go, right? And up until now, they've been more of like a benevolent older brother. You know, where um, they're like happy to share their rules and, and, you know, let people do all kinds of stuff like, you know, in their universe and stuff for free. And like, yeah, like, that's cool. Make your own RPG and and all that. And now they're turning into like the bully, like older brother. That's like, give me your lunch money. <laughs> so like one thing is, is that um, they're they're asking going forward and retroactively apparently because they're revoking the old open gaming license that um things like pathfinder was built on the back of um and then you know like cobalt press another example big bigger publisher where um they they have their books right next to dnd you know and so dnd sees them as like a direct competitor even though they're not a direct competitor really um they're saying either pay us 25% of your profits or we're going to, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to come after you. And um, uh, retroactively, you know, like anything that you've published in the past, if you're still making money from those things, that's, you know, that, that old open gaming license is invalid. And I don't know if that's even enforceable, like legally enforceable. I don't know if they can even do that. Um, like there's a lot of things where, you know, like the people are, are kind of up in arms and, and, you know, they're saying like, so for example, if, um, if uh, D and D or if uh, we're wizards, let's say if wizards says um, we're invalidating the um the the srd not the srd the ogl so the srd is just the rule set the open gaming license is the thing that allows people to publish under the dnd umbrella with that copyright and and um royalty free right so if they come after people and then there's this other clause that says that um oh you know you publish something inside the dnd universe we can, um, if you don't give us 25% of your profits going forward, um, we can uh, come after you and then um, within 30 days, you know, we can change this magic number, which I think is, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, $750,000, right? So... Um, if you if your company makes seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more, then you need to pay wizards twenty five percent of your profits, and that's because they decided that D and D is under monetized. They're just not making enough money from D and D because Hasbro is not making enough money, even though they made like a billion dollars last year from uh, from D and D. They didn't see enough profits, right? Um. So there's there's lots of other games that are sort of built on the back of the OGL, like uh, Pathfinder and uh, this says Traveler. I would say Traveler is totally its own thing. But that's another thing is that Traveler did their own um, SRD back in like 2014. And like a lot of these, um, you know, a lot of these, these companies are, are working on their own like actual OGL, um, which is like, save this for later because this is like the chef's kiss, you know, <laughs> um, the, 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 the thing that I thought was pretty poetic. Um, that's going to be at the end. Um, so, you know, people are, are pissed off because 
not only is D and D like or, or wizards retroactively going after people, anybody that has published anything ever under the D and D umbrella. Um, they're also saying that that if you don't pay them twenty five percent, then um, your IP, anything that you've come up with, any kind of setting, any kind of um, uh, you know like characters or likenesses and and et cetera, it's like things like that, like like Critical Role, you know, um, they have copyrights on all of their their likenesses, their their settings like Wildermount and all that. They're saying that if you don't pay us 25% of your profits, um, then that all belongs to us. And we can change this within uh, any time that we want. With All we have to do is give you 30 days notice. So, yeah, you know, like what this, what this means is that, just quoting this article, wizards can essentially get any content published under this license removed from the internet within a month under the threat of legal copyright infringement. So they send their army of lawyers after you. And um, going forward, right, anybody, I mean, like, well, so first off, even if you're giving away your content for free, you need to, um, you need to register with them. You know, even if you're like putting up like free one shots on the the um, like the DM skill, you know, or whatever, you still need to register with wizards and tell them that you're doing that. Um, and then <clears throat> if you and if you don't, then they can come after you with the army of lawyers and then they can take your um take your your copyrighted material anything that you've published um anything that uh you know you like any kind of setting or or whatever right so this is like this is horrible this is disgusting um like uh just going after everything anything and everything that has ever been published under this OGL that goes back for like 20 years and then you have all these other games like Pathfinder, Mutants and Masterminds, you know, like Traveler that are their complete own own setting. You know, Pathfinder, I would say, is very D&D adjacent because it. I think that that's another thing is that inside Pathfinder, they still actually are using the OGL because the original Pathfinder setting was a 3.5 setting. Uh, so it's like easier for them to, or it was easier for them up until now to just say the original Pathfinder setting was an OGL setting and, um, you know, uh, Pathfinder is its own thing. It's its own IP, but, uh, but, you know, this, this does use this, uh, this, this rule set that's sort of built on the back of this, right? Mutants and Masterminds is, um, I would say it's it's also like very very similar. The rules are very very similar to D and D, uh, or like a, you know different editions. But um, that's the thing is that the rules themselves are not copyrightable. That is not a copyright. If it was anything, it would be a um, a patent and, and patent law is totally different from intellectual property, intellectual copyright law. Um, patent law, uh, first off, it doesn't last anywhere near as long. Like, um, if you, you know, if you watched the, uh, the horrible Amazon, um, Lord of the Rings show, they had to buy those rights from the, um, uh, the family, you know, they, they had to buy the, uh, the, the rights from the Tolkien family to use Lord of the Rings, even though Tolkien has been gone for a very long time. And we owe a lot to Tolkien, like there's elves and orcs and, you know, like all kinds of stuff that's in the Tolkien universe, right, that belongs to Tolkien, and you know we'll get we'll get back to that later, 
But, you know, they had to pay a lot of money. They had to pay, I don't know exactly how much it was, but they had to pay a lot of money to the Tolkien family to use the Tolkien universe to make that show, right? Whereas um, H.P. Lovecraft, just his his um, stuff, you know, the whole Cthulhu, everything, that whole setting, just moved into the public domain because he's been dead for like over, I think it's 200 years. If somebody has been dead for 200 years or longer, then their, um, their intellectual property transfers to the public domain. So like Shakespeare or um, et cetera, et cetera, right? Those people, anything that they've written is now public works. But patents, like if, if they wanted to copyright the rule set, they couldn't do that because you can't copyright math. Um, if they wanted to patent the rule set, TSR would have had to do that back in the 70s. Um, they, can't, they can't just retroactively say that, oh, you know, we filed this uh, patent uh, copyright, you know, you know, like legal stuff way, way back when, and all of these other games that are, you know, we signed this open gaming license with and, you know, let them publish under our umbrella for 20 years. Like, no, that's all invalid. Now we're changing all of this going forward and any of their profits that they make now from now on, you know, 25% of it goes to us. I don't think that any of that is actually enforceable, but it's horrible. It's horrible that they're doing it to begin with. And, um, but especially going after the fans, going after the um, the content creators, like the people that are raising the ship. You know, it's like you have all these people, all these fans that are really into D and D. They're you know making content and stuff like that. And and wizards is kind of like they're shitting in their mouths and telling them that it's raining. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, so here's, here's my, my twist on it, right? This is probably the up till now that, that might've all been stuff that you've heard before. Um, so here's, here's my twist on it, right? So if you watch my channel, right, you, you might know that I'm a huge fan of, uh, uh, Stars Without Number. And, um, so, uh, Kevin, Kevin Crawford, the guy who, um, Cine Nomine Publishing, the guy who, who wrote uh, Stars Without Number, World, World, Worlds Without Number, and then he's currently working on a, a cyberpunk game, um, something like cyberpunk without, you know, it's a cyberpunk setting that uses the same kind of rule set, right? Um, he is like, he, he's kind of a hero to me <laughs> in the whole rpg publishing uh setting because like for one thing um like my first experience with him was directly was that i emailed him about something and i was like hey like i'm interested in um writing something for the uh using the stars without number rule set um do i need to buy a license do i need to you know like what kind of things do i have to watch out for to make things um not copyright infringement got back to me within 15 minutes he wrote me an email back within 15 minutes and he was like here's what you do you know uh you can't you can't use like um the the setting you need to come up with your own original setting you need to do this like you can't pull stat blocks you have to you can reference stat blocks you can say it's on this page in the stars without number book um you can do this and this and this and so Kevin is like, he is amazing about getting back to people and also sharing, you know, like with the community, a lot of stuff that he does, he just puts out for free. Like he, um, the, the original Stars Without Number book was paid for by a Kickstarter. And then he put the rules out there for free, he put a free PDF out there. And then you can, um, you can buy a book, but, um, the, the, PDF is out there for free, right? And um, he's also just done all done all kinds of free stuff. Like he has a magazine that um, like publishes different kinds of content, like settings and 
uh, adventures and, you know, like NPCs and all kinds of stuff like that. That's all free. And it's all on drive through RPG. I'll put a link down here if you want to check it out. Um, so, you know, we're on Reddit and we're like, we're like, here's, here's one, one person that says, um, you know, now more than ever is the best opportunity for Kevin Crawford to release a non-revocable Stars Without Number OGL, open, Stars Without Number open game license. The, the D&D third party creators are getting, about to get stiffed with the new OGL Hasbro release. Um, considering he gives away the majority of the rules for free, there's nothing to lose in my opinion. I don't think many creators will come over, but it doesn't take that many. Imagine if there were more pay tables running stars without number, fate is calling, right? So Kevin immediately, you know, responds and he's like, my position is that the OGL is unnecessary for anything I would permit and unsuitable for anything I wouldn't. No one needs my permission to write mechanically compatible worlds without, you know, without number material, which is, is this is going to come up later. You can't, um, copyright a rule set if you say a d20 system or a 2d6 system um like a lot of the old school revival stuff is based on a 2d6 system um or you know like a 3d6 system you cannot copyright that um the the there's you can't copyright math you can't copyright a rule set um and uh so it's that's that is not copyright to begin with. It's not intellectual property. Math is not intellectual property. Um, if anything, it would be a patent. And um, <clears throat> so he says that no one needs my permission to actually write material for one of my settings. Um, they just have to use their own wording and text and setting uh, and. This is, you know, this is 100% accurate. Um, you know, like my specific unique IP is a different matter. A license is needed to set some adventure in the latter earth or the Terran mandate in your Stars Without Number setting. So this is true. You know, latter earth is, is his setting. That's Worlds Without Number. Terran mandate is Stars Without Number. If you're going to set something physically in that universe, you need to buy a license. Um, so, you know, the, the workaround is you just make your own setting or you just call it something else. Instead of calling it the scream, you call it the, you know, the, the, the great apocalypse or the fall or whatever. In my setting, I call it the fall, right? Um, so I, you know, I, I wrote a similar thing. I didn't see this post, but I wrote a similar thing. I said, you know, um, uh, what does the open gaming license mean for Stars Without Number? Because uh, I was under the impression, wrongly, I was incorrect about this, um, that the Stars used the, um, the original D&D SRD from 2000 and the uh, Traveler SRD from 2014. And I actually knew, I knew that he was going to respond to me. And I said, you know, I said, are there any rules lawyers, like actual lawyers, Kevin? Because <laughs> I knew that Kevin was going to, he was going to respond because he responds to everything on like the Reddit in his settings, you know, which is amazing. Uh, like prolific writer. And and he's the only guy, Sine Nomine Publishing is him. And, um, and yeah, immediately Kevin gets back to me. He's like, currently it means nothing at all. Stars Without Number, Worlds Without Number, CWN, which is the cyberpunk, cyberpunk without number, which is coming up. There's a Kickstarter coming up very soon. Does not use the OGL nor any license for that matter. And then, you know, I, I, I put, I pressed him on it. And then, you know, I said, um, does, uh, does, um, Uh, stars use anything from the original, the D and D SRD. Um, does it use anything from the Traveler SRD standard rules documents? Um, and he says no, they don't use those SRDs um, or any other text produced by anyone else. And then, you know, like the, um, but 
But this is interesting because, like, technically, in most of these games, there is nothing that wizards can come after them for. Um, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't know as far as Pathfinder goes because apparently there is something somewhere inside the Pathfinder, um, the the Pathfinder books, you know, or whatever that um that says that because the original pathfinder setting was like a 3.0 or 3.5 setting that it does technically use the open gaming license um but you know pathfinder is its own thing it's its own rule set it's its own uh intellectual property it's its own world you know like you know setting everything right so as far as them coming after pathfinder and like there is some wording in this um, this uh, OGL that sounds like it directly targets Path Paizo, and I would say Cobalt Press too. Um, but you know, like it, it could be something. It could mean something different for Pathfinder. But if you play Mutants and Masterminds, or if you play Traveler, or if you play like you know any of those games um that are a completely different setting from D D, completely different rule set even if it was originally built on the back of the um the D D rule set there's nothing that they can do about that you know allegedly i'm not a lawyer i don't you know i don't know for sure about that but i think that that's this new 1.1 license is completely unenforceable and they've also been like backtracking on it where they say um you know oh we um this was just a draft that we sent out and like it isn't set in stone yet and and blah 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 but that was a total lie um they they sent it out with uh contracts they sent they sent um contracts out to uh kickstarter because apparently kickstarter is their preferred platform now for making content under their umbrella and if you make a if you kickstart something um then you will only have to pay 20 percent of your profits going forward instead of 25 percent and i think i'm being cynical here but you know allegedly um i think it's because kickstarters have a potential to blow up and make way more money to where you might have like a Kickstarter where you're like, okay, I need $20,000 and that's going to cover all the publishing costs. That's going to cover, you know, like all of these things like, um, uh, uh, shipping and, you know, and like, it's going to pay my writers and illustrators and all that. Um, and then you have, and then it blows up, right? It, it for some reason, whatever reason it becomes super popular then you're in that uh that that tax bracket where they can you know cash in um so that's i think that that's part of the reason why they want to push people in the direction of kickstarter instead of say drive through rpg or the dm skilled you know or whatever something like that um and uh yeah, like, you know, last night in my D&D game, we were talking about it, and and people mentioned that, um, you know, Wizards has gone around and they've been snatching things up. Um, like, during the pandemic, a lot of people were playing D&D, <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening, like Critical Role, and a lot of people, a lot of new people coming to the hobby, and they've had, like, record profits. It's still not enough. They've been going around snatching up things like D and D Beyond, and um, people in my game group. We've noticed that things have been vanishing from D and D Beyond. Like, um, uh, if you didn't know in D and D Beyond, you know you can buy like books and stuff like that, and um, and then it has the whole book on there, and it's a lot cheaper than buying a physical copy. Um, but then, like an Arth Arcana and stuff like that is is vanishing from D, D beyond and like homebrew content and stuff like that like they're just they're really really cracking down and enforcing their you know their their ip which i think is just a huge mistake it's such like 
they're just shooting themselves in the foot in the worst way because the, it's like it's really like self-destructive behavior to just seize you know like squeeze money out of the fans for a little bit of extra money and then alienate all of these people you know like content creators and because like anybody who is making stuff for D D, if they're smart they're not going to make it for D D anymore um because you don't want to just give wizards all of your intellectual property you know the stuff that you've worked so hard on um just because you know years and years ago like you made some kind of setting like you know in high school or whatever and then you made a little bit of money from it and then wizards is like oh well we changed the open game license and now you owe us three thousand dollars for that thing that you put on drive through rpg you know 10 years ago or whatever or we're going to come after you with our lawyers and then it's going to be our property allegedly i'm not saying that they would do that but they can which is just shitty just sucks right so if you're going forward i don't think that people are going to be publishing like i wouldn't i definitely wouldn't um i don't think that people are going to be publishing stuff for their setting right so getting back to this uh getting back to the uh stars without number thread right there's some stuff that uh um uh that you know we we talked about um and like my absolute favorite thing to just come out of this and you 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 might have heard about this but you know this is like new a new thing is that um in response to to wizards coming after them uh cobalt press and then this is the thing that's just like you know chef's kiss um they are releasing their own rule set <laughs> called which is like a 5e clone um called project black flag so you know say that you have a huge collection of D books like i do uh like 5e books and you know um you uh maybe you want to publish something you know somewhere down the line um that is like 5e compatible um uh cobalt press has got your back they're going to replace the ogl the the wizards of the coast ogl or they're going to make their own ogl which is basically a 5e clone um which uh is yeah so so here's if this is uh this is from cobalt press's website and apparently when the news came out that they were doing this the website kept crashing because everybody was going here to check out this you know this uh post that they did so it says cobalt press has always been and always will be committed to open gaming and table in the tabletop community our goal is to continue creating the best material for players and game masters alike this means that cobalt press will release its current kickstarter projects as planned including campaign builders cities and towns already printed and on its way to backers this winter and in particular deep magic volume 2 will be fully compatible with 5e rules we are working with our virtual tabletop partners to maintain support for digital platforms which is another thing that's in the the ogl um because it apparently is only supposed to cover books um and then as we look ahead it becomes even more important for our actions to represent our values while we wait to see what the future holds we are moving forward with clear-eyed work on a new core fantasy tabletop rule set available open and subscription fee for those who love it called project black flag <laughs> so if you want to keep making D, D content and not uh sign the new ogl and you want to um not uh pay wizards or you know or or be a part of any of this trashy shit show you can use um uh cobalt press's ogl and uh and then publish under under their umbrella so that's the thing that just like i i thought that was pretty poetic and pretty great and and i 
gained a lot of respect for uh, for Kobo Press for doing that. But uh, but anyways, that's my hot take on this. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I do have a painting video. I'm actually I'm working on it right now. I'm editing the video. It's about doing stormtroopers. I'm gonna put that out. So don't like don't like everybody rush to unsubscribe because I did something about a rule set. Um, <laughs> so so the the painting video will be out this week too. But I just wanted to talk about this too because I thought it was interesting and pretty poetic. So anyways, have a great day, and uh, uh, hopefully this um, this kind of put a smile on your face and, and puts you at ease if you're worried about um, your game or, you know, your setting or, or whatever, anything that you've published or stuff like this going forward. So uh, yeah, have a better one and take care of yourselves.